Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, we recently reviewed the Radeon RX 5500 XT, and like most in the tech press, we came away feeling pretty disappointed with what AMD had to offer. The pricing just wasn't as competitive as it should have been. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about something that a lot of you noticed shortly after the release. We saw a lot of news articles that started to surface claiming the 5500 XT might actually be a lot better than first thought thanks to its PCI Express 4.0 support claiming it's actually bottlenecked by PCIe 3.0. These news articles claimed that the 5500 XT is around 10 to 20% faster using PCIe 4.0, and all of this surfaced because of an interesting article by PC Games Hardware where they compared PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 performance of the 5500 XT for and 8GB models. I suppose at this point it is worth noting that AMD has opted to limit the 5500X to, to 8 times operation as it makes it cheaper to produce. So whereas PCIe 3.0 times 16 cards have 16 gigabytes of PCIe bandwidth, the 5500XT is limited to just 8 gigabytes and can only get 16 gigabytes when using PCIe 4.0, which right now is only possible using a rather expensive X570 motherboard. Now, just to be clear, we aren't attempting to call out PC games hardware with this video. And if you think that's where this is heading, then I urge you to watch till the end. With that out of the way, let's talk about their testing. I believe they used the Ryzen 5 3600 and switched between the PCIe modes in the BIOS to compare PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 performance, which is perfectly acceptable. However, with no Intel test system as a reference point, I did wonder how do you know if what you're seeing is really a 10 to 20% performance uplift over performance shown in the day one reviews? And I don't mean to imply that PC games hardware were suggesting that as I'm not saying they were, but a lot of the news articles surrounding this topic were. So it makes me wonder how they drew those conclusions without an Intel test system as a reference point. Also, it's hard to know if they're not running into some kind of bug or performance issue using PCIe 3.0 on the X570 motherboard. Again, it's pretty difficult to know that without an Intel test system as a reference point. Basically, I had too many questions and it seemed like a lot of you guys did as well, given we've been hit with quite literally hundreds upon hundreds of requests to look into this. Unfortunately, the timing right now just isn't great, Christmas and all that, but I have managed to run a few tests that should help shed a bit more light on this situation. For this video, I've tested eight games at 1080p and 1440p. The four and eight gigabyte versions of the 5500 XT have been tested. And again, I'm using the Sapphire Pulse models. Now I used the Ryzen 9 3950X on the MSI X570 Unify using both PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 and we'll be comparing that data with the previously recorded data with the Core i9 9900K test system. Now please note the 9900K GPU test rig was overclocked to 5 GHz so this is not meant to be a CPU benchmark. So AMD fans don't go getting your knickers all in a knot because the 3950X isn't overclocked. I cannot stress this enough. This is not the point of the video. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the results. First up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here we're using the second highest quality preset. At 1080p, the 8GB 5500 XT delivered the exact same 79 FPS on average and 63 FPS 1% low using either the third or fourth gen PCIe 8x spec. What's interesting to note here is that our Intel 1900K test system overclocked to 5 GHz was 5% faster. You'd expect these systems to be 100% GPU limited under these conditions, but evidently that's not the case here. Now looking at the 4 GB version of the 5500 XT, we do see up to an 11% performance increase when swapping from PCIe 3.0 to 4.0 on the Ryzen system. Basically, we're seeing a situation where the 4GB VRAM capacity is maxed out, and as a result, the 5500 XT is forced to use system memory. In order to access the system memory, it must use the PCI Express bus, and doubling the bandwidth from 8GB per second to 16GB per second makes a noticeable difference. That said, the 1900K is able to achieve the same level of performance when using the PCIe 3.0 spec. So if the Intel system supported PCIe 4.0, it's possible the 4GB 5500 XT would perform closer to the 8GB model, but for now we just can't say for sure. Increasing the resolution to 1440p accentuates what we saw at 1080p with the 4GB 5500 XT. Now we're seeing up to a 14% performance increase when using PCIe 4.0 
on the Ryzen system, which allows it to match the Intel Core i9-9900K. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the high quality preset, which is more of a medium setting as you have very high and ultra high above it. Anyway, this seemed like an appropriate setting for testing the 5500 XT, as we're only looking at just over 60 FPS on average at 1080p. Again, the 9900K provided the best result with the 8GB model, and this time we saw performance with the Ryzen 9 3950X was very similar using either PCIe mode, just 1-2 to two FPS in it. The same was also true when testing with the 4GB model, though this time the 3950X using PCIe 4.0 matched the 9900K. Increasing the resolution to 1440p tanks the frame rate, but here the 4GB model produced the same 44fps regardless of the platform or PCIe mode used. We do see some variance with the 8GB model, but again the 9900K provided a strong result using PCIe 3.0. Here we see that the Far Cry New Dawn results are a bit odd, as typically Intel CPUs perform much better in this title. The variation with the 8GB model is pretty minimal, but we do see up to a 6% increase with the 4GB version when using the AMD CPU. That said, we see little difference between using PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 with the Ryzen processor, and it's the same story at 1440p. Rainbow Six Siege shows a clear improvement in 1% low performance when moving from PCIe 3.0 to 4.0 with the Ryzen processor. However, even when using PCIe 4.0, the 5500 XT still couldn't match the results seen with the Intel CPU. Increasing the resolution to 1440p sees the 8GB 5500 XT become the performance limiting component, and regardless of the PCIe version used, we end up with the same 76 FPS on average and 58 FPS 1% low result. Now, when looking at the 4GB version, we see up to a 16% performance increase for the 1% low result with the newer PCIe revision. But again, this meant the 3950X was now only able to match the 9900K. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was tested using the highest quality settings, as this allowed for very impressive performance at 1080p. Here we see very little difference with the 8GB model, but we do see quite a substantial performance uplift when using PCIe 4.0 with the 4GB version, at least when paired with the Ryzen processor. Here we're looking at up to an 11% increase in performance, but even so, that was only enough to get within 1-2 FPS of the Core i9 processor. Moving to 1440p sees the 8GB model deliver similar performance regardless of the PCIe spec or processor used. However, it is quite a different story with the 4GB model. Here we can see up to a 21% performance improvement when using PCIe 4.0, and more crucially, up to a 13% improvement over the Intel system. Basically, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is a very memory intensive title that easily overwhelmed the 4GB frame buffer, so doubling the PCIe bandwidth makes a big difference in that scenario. The Ryzen 9 3950X generally offers a slight performance increase over the 1900K in F1 2019, so it's not surprising that we see the 3950X matching or beating the 9900K here. Looking strictly at the 3950X though, we see about a 3% improvement when using PCIe 4.0, so I guess no real performance advantage then. It's a similar story at 1440p, the extra bandwidth offered by PCIe 4.0 allows for a few extra frames in this title, but nothing to get too excited about. The Ryzen 9 3950X also performs well in Gears 5, so again it does well relative to the 9900K. When comparing the PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 configurations on the Ryzen processor, we're again looking at up to a 3% difference. It's also a similar story at 1440p, here PCIe 4.0 offers a very minor performance increase, and I feel like this is what you're going to see in the vast majority of games with the 5500 XT. Now we're going to end on one of the more interesting results I found during my testing. Here we see when testing with Battlefield 5, using just the high quality preset, that even with the 8GB version of the 5500 XT, we're looking at quite a substantial performance uplift using PCIe 4.0. When compared to the 3950X using PCIe 3.0, we're looking at up to a 17% increase in performance and 12% over the 1900K. This is a surprising result for the 8GB model. And quite interestingly, we see virtually identical margins with the 4GB model at 1080p. Clearly these margins aren't a result of flooding the VRAM. This title has to be transmitting more information via the PCIe bus when compared to the other titles tested. Moving to 1440p, we see that now the 4GB model is starting to become more limited by its VRAM capacity, but even so, using PCIe 4.0 enabled up to a 20% performance boost even over the Intel system. 
Out of interest, I checked how well the Radeon RX 580 8 GB performed on the 3950X system, as I know the Ryzen 9 processors often deliver better 1% low performance in this title. However, comparing the RX 580 on the 3950X to what we got with the 1900K, we see almost no difference in performance. At 1440p, the Ryzen processor improved 1% low performance by a 4% margin, so basically the same frame rates, and this is what we saw with the 5500 XT 8GB when comparing the 3950X using PCIe 3.0 to the 1900K. So it does appear quite clear that extra PCI Express bandwidth makes a big difference in this title. As further evidence of this, I retested the Intel system using PCIe 2.0, so this reduced the PCI Express bandwidth for the 5500 XT from 8 gigabytes per second down to just 4 gigabytes per second. And doing so saw a massive 24% reduction in 1% low performance at 1080p and an 18% reduction at 1440p. Okay, well that certainly was an interesting test and full credit has to go to PC Games Hardware for first looking into this and bringing it to light. But I do feel a lot of the news stories and I suppose people's interpretation of their results or take away from their content uh, has been a bit misleading. Stuff like 10 to 20% performance claims is sort of a norm or what you should see across the board. Uh, PCI Express 3.0 being a bottleneck, things like that, probably a bit misleading. Firstly, the eight gigabyte version of the 5500 XT saw little to no performance gains in the majority of games tested. And this included titles such as Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, F1 2019, Far Cry New Dawn, Gears 5, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In fact, the only titles where we saw a difference included Rainbow Six Siege. Here, the average frame rate was pretty much the same. In fact, I think it was exactly the same. We just saw a small improvement in 1% low performance. And then the big gains were seen in Battlefield 5. But for the most part, PCIe 4.0 did little to improve performance for the 8GB 5500 XT. As for the 4GB model, we did see gains in Battlefield 5, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Rainbow Six Siege, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So half of the games tested. That said, Rainbow Six Siege and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and the performance there was just as strong or even stronger using PCIe 3.0 with the Intel Core i9-1900K. And I believe this is due to the 1900K offering much lower uh, latency access to the system memory. So this helps overcome the limited PCIe bandwidth. It's also worth noting that I used 16 gigabytes of high-speed DDR4 memory, as did PC Games Hardware, and this can help reduce the performance impact running out of VRAM has on system performance. Had we tested with just 8 gigabytes of system memory, there is a very good chance the performance improvements offered by PCIe 4.0 for the 4GB 5500 XT would be greatly diminished. I also don't think it would change much if we compared the 4GB 5500 XT to the GTX 1650 Super on an X570 system. I think overall the margins would be much the same. But in any case, it doesn't really matter because right now there are no affordable motherboards that support PCIe 4.0, so ultimately it would have been AMD bottlenecking the 5500 XT. Had AMD wired the 5500 XT for full time 16 operation, we wouldn't be talking about any of this right now. It's also worth noting that the GTX 1650 Super and even the crappy non-Super version are wired for full PCIe 3.0 times 16 bandwidth. So the fact that they don't support PCIe 4.0 is not an issue here, and technically they are better than the 5500 XT in that regard. In fact, in our recent 4GB versus 8GB 5500XT content, we saw a few examples of this and at the time completely overlooked the fact that the 1650 Super was operating in a 16x mode while the 5500XT was limited to 8x. So that's my mistake. Testing with Call of Duty showed the 5500XT really suffered when reducing the VRAM capacity from 8GB to 4GB, but Nvidia's 1650 Super did just fine with 4GB and now we know why. So, in short, PCIe 4.0 isn't a saving grace for the 5500 XT, not just because support is limited to premium X570 motherboards, but because most games will see no difference in performance, especially popular titles such as Fortnite, for example. Moreover, the fact that the 5500 XT is limited to 8x operation is just another knock on the product, and another reason to buy the RX 580 or GTX 1650 Super instead. Hell, even the 4GB RX 570 can run in a 16x mode. Now, just finally, I would like to reiterate that we're not calling out PC Games Hardware. I believe they're testing to be accurate. I also think their article is rather good and it looks at something that nobody else really did, so that's very cool. But yeah, 
I think their testing is accurate for the conditions they tested under, and I don't not trying to imply their test conditions were unrealistic or anything like that. They just happened to use a maximum in-game quality settings, which we opted not to do for our 5500 XT testing. So that will just sort of increase a lot of the margins you see, particularly with the four gigabyte model as it runs out of VRAM. But anyway, not calling them out. I think their article's very good. I'll link it in the video description. I think it's worth checking out if you're interested. And I happen to agree with their conclusion Part of it basically says that as games become more advanced, they become more demanding, PCIe 4.0 will take over, and that will just be another nail in Intel's Coffee Lake coffin, as it only supports PCIe 3.0. Anyway, I think we've pretty well covered this one. I, I don't think there's too much more testing we could do, at least with the time we have available. I've got to go off to a family Christmas get together shortly. So we will uh, edit this one up as quick as possible, get it to you guys. And that will be one of my last videos for the year. Anyway, thank you to all our Patreon members. A lot of you did request this video, so I'm doing it for you guys. Hopefully it was to uh, your satisfaction. And yeah, if you appreciate the work we do here at Hardbox, then you can join us over at Patreon, become part of the community, get access to our Discord chat, monthly live streams, a lot of cool stuff. We also have merch available at the Harbour Unbox merch store. Links for all that stuff is in the video description. But anyway, I've got to get cracking. So I'm your host, Steve. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. <laughs>